When you said neuroplasticity, I was like, I mean, I, I know a little bit about science and I know a little bit about that, but I would love, you know, cause I know about it, but I would love for you to teach our audience that are listening. What exactly is neuroplasticity? So we're, I'm asking for them not necessarily for myself. Of course, of course you are, of course you are. Uh, so in its simplest terms, and let's break it down, neuroplasticity. So neuro, think the brain, more specifically the neurons or the nerve cells that really are the building blocks of the brain and of the nervous system. And then plasticity, the term meaning malleable or stretchable or changeable. So neuroplasticity is simply our brain's ability to change. Okay. So our brain's ability to change, can that still happen? Because my understanding was like, once you turn 25, 26, something like that, your brain is fully developed. So is this beneficial to our younger folks? Or I mean, as adults, does this happen as well? So Sheldon, old dogs can absolutely learn new tricks. Okay. So let's for sure, first of all, recognize that neuroplasticity, our brains are changeable, are stretchable throughout our lifetime. And you're absolutely right. For uh, a long time, it was thought that there was this moment where uh, where our brains no longer change. But I, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to take even a step back a little bit, because even yeah. this idea uh, that our brains can change is a relatively new concept in, in uh, you know, scientifically and certainly in the educational context. I mean, really for hundreds and hundreds of years, it was believed science understood that the brain was fixed, was kind of hardwired. Think of it as a box and it could be filled with knowledge or content and it had its own limitation. And this was really understood to be the case for a long time. And I'd love to explore the implications of that fixed view in our educational system, because it's only been a couple of decades, really in the 1960s, where there started to be experiments with animals initially in laboratories, showing that if they were trained a certain way, then they performed better in certain mm -hmm. mazes. Uh, and in fact, their brains were changing. There was structural and physiological changes to their brains after really specialized training. So that's really where where this idea began of leveraging it for uh, human benefit. The, the, so the concept of neuroplasticity is relatively new, but the more we come to understand about how our brains operate, the more we can understand its capacity to change. And you're right, Sheldon, even the understanding that, uh, for example, young children had more plastic plastic brains than older, that's really shifted uh, probably only in the last maybe uh, decade or so, because science, again, has taught us, and we've had people in their 80s who have benefited from our uh, particular approach. So uh, certainly you do not have to uh, tolerate uh, or endure uh, the parts of, uh, of, of your life that you think you are just are or are not a math person or you do or don't have a good memory it's absolutely possible to change your brain's capacity for the better so if i'm hearing this correctly the idea that your brain is fully developed at 25 26 somewhere around there that's a myth is that what i'm hearing absolutely absolutely it is it's it's fair to say that the brain is most plastic okay the younger we are it's fair to say mm -hmm. but i would say the the primary factor in meaningful measurable cognitive change is not the age of the brain it's the active engagement of the brain so okay. there are some core principles of neuroplasticity some core conditions that if they're in place that's the most you have the best chance uh for your brain to become stronger more capable and it's not necessarily age. It's really the willingness, the ability, the motivation. Uh, and of course, the task itself has to follow certain criteria. But certainly the, the possibility for throughout our lifetime to benefit from cognitive change is, is possible. So it's like flexing your 
Muscle. Like, I, I like to go to the it's gym. It's a great analogy. Now. Yeah, I mean, you 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 work out, Sheldon, so you know this. I, I'll be in there. I'll be in the gym. So so <laughs> yeah. it, 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 you get those reps in. You do a few sets so of. of go ahead. It's all reps. It's okay. absolutely. I mean, just like a bodybuilder who works out at the gym, they 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 have to commit. You know, if they go once a mm -hmm. month, there's not going to be any benefit. Right. So there's absolutely that's one of that that active engagement, sustained engagement is a key quality of neuroplasticity. But it's the same concept. Absolutely. You focus on uh, you focus on your body to become stronger, to become leaner, to become uh, more responsive. So, too, can your brain through targeted exercise. Now, the only benefit or particular benefit to cognitive training, brain training. So I'm going to use the term cognitive. I'm referring really to the brain here. The benefit to cognitive training over uh, physical training is the brain is better than a muscle because once it's strong, it, it goes to its own maintenance program through everyday intellectual activity. So we, it really does have interesting implications for our brain health, our body health. It's the same principles. Uh, and as long as we are constantly exposing ourselves to new and novel brain exercise, you have an opportunity to really uh, improve your functioning. And also interesting benefit to compared to building our body, you would know this, that you can't actually target a particular muscle. You may be able to target uh, a group. It could be leg day for you today, Sheldon. Mm -hmm. But in fact, the brain can uh, undergo really distinct uh, and different what's called differentiated stimulation so stimulating a really specific part of the brain responsible for a certain type of memory or responsible for a certain type of attention or a certain type of uh, auditory processing and target and stimulate and strengthen really specific cognitive functions but you can't target so the question i was going to ask because it was on my mind